À, à, chị Hồng có thể tắt xe được không? À, cái gì để em xe? À, dạ vâng. Em tắt xe. Anh xe lại. OK. Yeah. Um, group two. Uh, group three. Yeah. Uh, group two. Yeah. <coughs> uh, so hello, teacher. Hello, everyone. Um, group three. Uh, uh, I uh, Wong. Uh, Q U I N. We will uh, present the uh, group two uh, discuss about uh, some uh, risk, um, some uh, misunderstand. So uh, we uh, uh, listing here uh, three risk and uh, to uh, uh, limit time so uh, we just uh, um, uh, not detail uh, the mitigation action, uh, mitigation action control yeah so uh, in this file we will uh, detail more about the uh, mitigation action uh, with the group two uh, member so i just uh, with uh, present uh, about the uh, risk number one uh lack of uh, personnel um the risk is the uh, quality, quality uh about the um, license or the certificate that uh, may be uh, expired yeah so uh, the cost the uh, due to uh, covid 19 pandemic yeah so a lack of um, personnel not uh, come to work so uh, lack of training uh, so the certificate uh, expired and um, uh, we uh, evaluate the uh, risk and the current risk is high with the likelihood is likely uh, hmm. consequence uh, moderate. Uh, so we use the risk matches uh, same with the Vietnam Airlines in the um, slide. Yeah. Um, six on six, yeah, matches. And the uh, mitigation action, uh, mitigation action is uh, a recurrent training for the staff. Um, after re recurrent training, uh, we uh, do the project. Uh, uh, when uh, um, a long time uh, go to uh, back to work, they will do the project before ship and um, briefing before the ship duty. Uh, briefing about um, the guidance about the procedure. Uh, before enter to the ship. And uh, after uh, three uh, control action, we have a uh, uh, risk uh, reduce, uh, residue or risk is uh, very low with the likelihood is unlikely and um, consequence uh, is level one uh, incidental, yeah. Hmm. And this is the risk number one. About uh, risk number two, we uh, Define here the uh, lack of uh, revenue uh, effect to the financial, yeah. Um, cause it a uh, COVID 19 effect to the uh, reduce the demand. Uh, this means uh, reduce the passenger. Uh, so, um, reduce the revenue. And uh, the current risk is high uh, because it uh, affect to the uh, operate of the airline. Uh, so the risk is high uh, with the likelihood is likely and uh, consequence is uh, moderate. And uh, we uh, apply the uh, mitigation actions, the uh, promotion campaign and uh, advertising for um, get more passengers. Um, after two uh, mitigation actions, we uh, have the risk uh, decrease to low, high to low. Yeah. Uh, with the consequent uh, minor level two and uh, likelihood is uh, unlikely. And the uh, K3 is um, uh, uh, DFT, uh, ground handling equipment. Uh, so uh, a long time, of course, is uh, due to a long time not you. So uh, when we um, are back to a normal operation, uh, some uh, ground handling equipment uh, have uh, maybe have a problem. So uh, the risk uh, is low and uh, mitigation action is um, uh, maintenance, uh, overhaul, or the investment uh, in this uh, equipment. 
uh, before we uh, bring it to uh, operation. So uh, with two uh, control action, the uh, residual risk uh, decreased to uh, very low. Yeah, uh, about this uh, own case, uh, that's uh, group two um, uh, discussed, yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Um, yeah, thank, thank you, teacher. Does anyone have any comments on this one? No. Um, can I can I offer some suggestions, please? Um, yep. I, I'm thinking of the first one. Um, it's lack of personnel due to COVID. But I wonder whether that truly describes the risk. It lack of personnel sounds a little like um, it could be a cause. So what is the effect of a lack of personnel? Um, and I'm wondering if this shows the value of, on the other spreadsheet, we'd added objectives. Uh, and I'm thinking now if that had objectives, I mean, lack of personnel could have an effect on efficiency, safety, service quality, for example, three different objectives. And I think perhaps a bit like group five's risk, whether that would benefit from being split up into different, um, uh, a more detailed level of what the risk is. The reason I ask that is um, you've rated consequences moderate and then the residual consequence as incidental. Uh, but I'm thinking if a lack of personnel is causing a safety issue, then the consequence doesn't change. But the likelihood does. Yeah, the mm -hmm. one uh, not change. So if it was a, a mistake causing a damage to aircraft, for example, yeah. the consequence is always damage to aircraft, but the likelihood of that happening has changed. So you've changed one, but not the other, maybe. Yeah, thank you, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, group, group two, your group two. You had another spreadsheet showing when I when you were working in a group, weren't you? Did did I see another spreadsheet, a very detailed one? Was that group two? I'm not sure. Nhóm hai còn có một cái file Excel nào khác uh, no, mm, no, no, only, only this one, yeah. <laughs> Maybe another group. Must be another group. Okay, yeah, interesting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> right, you. Okay, that were my, my first comments. I think uh, it, it certainly illustrates the advantage of putting an objective down so that you can split a risk into components. And I think group five, the same thing. Yeah. Uh, any Anyone else got comments on this one? The, the other thing, go on. Mm -hmm. sorry, uh, is someone trying to speak? I'm not sure. I just have a quick question. So you were talking about the number one risk of group two, which is like a personnel, right? And mm -hmm. you were thinking of uh, this would be a cost instead of a risk. And your question is like, you would ask what is the effect of like a personnel? Mm -hmm. the, would that the same question be applicable to number two, lack of re revenue? Should that lack of revenue also be a cost instead of a risk? Uh, it's interesting. Yeah, I think it's a valid question and it did cross my mind whether lack of revenue, you ask the question, so what? You know, you can say lack of personnel, so what? Lack of revenue, so what? What's the consequence of that? And I think lack of revenue is interesting. Well, in a small airline, a regulator would see that and think 
they're going to compromise safety because they can't afford to be safe. So um, a large airline probably uh, probably wouldn't happen. But yes, what is the lack of revenue? Is a is that a cause? Hmm. Uh, so uh, maybe the risk is the safety of the fly. Yeah. Mm, mm. Yeah. 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 yeah thank you. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Thank you much. Yeah. Uh, yeah, thank any you. other comments? Okay. What group now? We've got three, five, two, four. Four or one. Yes. Yes. Uh, group one. Uh, group one. Yeah, uh, we are a technical group, so uh, we uh, we identify the potential risk regarding to aircraft towing in April, lead uh, to aircraft uh, collision. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, so there are uh, there are three uh, serious incidents from early uh, this year up to now. Um, uh, firstly, uh. Rich uh, likelihood, we are rating uh, number five. Uh, secondly, is a uh, risk uh, severity rating C level. Uh, according to the matrix, we identify risk assessment is a uh, five C level intoler intolerable. Uh, after that, we take the follow following uh, mitigation measure. Uh, the first, uh, we revise the uh, co coordination procedure among uh, involved party. The second one, uh, we add a number of safe, uh, safeguard personnel uh, to protect aircraft uh, in the packing area when it is a north operation in the hangar, vehicle hangar. Uh, the last one, uh, we install number of warning lights. Uh, in the tip of aircraft wings. Um, after take the mitigation measure, we um, uh, we identify the new residu residual risk, risk to uh, 3D. That means a tolerable, uh, acceptable level based on the risk mitigation. Um, so that's all. Uh, is there anyone in, in our group uh, would like to ask more comment? No more comments from the group? Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, this is an interesting one. Um, it's, can I ask, um, when you were rating, you used the term intolerable, which suggests to me you're using a different I know uh, matrix to others. Is that right? Yes, um, intolerable level. That means 5C level is uh, unacceptable. Uh, sorry, can, can I just clarify? Have you got a different matrix? Uh, two the one yes, that's in uh, that slide one? pack two. Slide yeah. pack two. Yeah. Uh, it should be um, rare and the impact should be uh, major. 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 did you hear that? Y yes, I heard the word rare. Yes. And major. Major. And uh, but my question was um, the use of the word intolerable. In fact, the use of the word rare suggests that some people are using a different matrix to what's in slide pack two. Yes, because the number I had uh, our own uh, 
risk management. So in uh, in that we have um, different level. It has yeah. different names. Is there is there a copy? Can we see that? So can we? Do you have a copy you could share on the screen? No, no, I don't have that. No. Uh, okay. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay, just uh, I am a member of the uh, group one, and yeah. I want to uh, to uh, clarify the our the uh, determine of the uh, current risk is about the five C likelihood and party because the, uh, we uh, work in based on the the document of the slides, uh, which is. Um, for the consequence, we have to hear the uh, sick level. Mm -hmm. And uh, because it's the problem is uh, this one, when they cut the towing, we have a two, uh, three years incident in this year. Mm. And to, to the last update of the Bamboo Airways and uh, Bichet Air, they have the, uh, the collision, aircraft collision on route due to the, uh, uh, during the towing, uh, one of them. And the thing is, uh, we put the level five in this case because it, according to the level five, the severe, that's the aircraft is going to be damaged. In this case, the wing tip, the wing tip uh, of the aircraft is damaged. Aircraft have to be all AOG and it's uh, have a cost of loss of the money for uh, mm. re replace the, the new uh, wing tip, wingless, mm. especially mm. new uh, new aircraft. The, uh, it, it happens with the uh, A321 medium range aircraft. So this is con, con, con got the, uh, the million US, US dollar. Hmm. So the thing is we put this five if we cause it to have a, uh, aircraft damage. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, the, the impact is uh, between the sea uh, because the, um, the seas in the table, this may be happy, uh, happen in, uh, in the years one or two times. Uh, with the uh, from uh, so we can see the probability change from around the 11 to 50 percent. So, uh, because this year has already happened three times, so yeah. we can see that this is this is good enough for the uh, the the C impasse. So that's why the, our group decides to find C. So yeah. So we have uh, some uh, mitigation and it's a part of the procedure of the maintenance staff because um, the, the, some, of these, some of the reason come from the, uh, the, the uh, maintenance staff when they moving the aircraft in the airport. Uh, as you know, the, in the Vietnam and many airports in Vietnam, the separation, the set the machine between the aircraft, uh, I mean this, the spacing between the, mm. the parking in the uh, at the airport very uh, very marginal. It's it's mm. not like there are some other airports like uh, around Asia like Hong Kong Singapore. They uh, easy you can see there's some other airport in the world it's very uh, big airports and a lot of spacing a lot of safety machine. But in Vietnam, it's very narrow. Uh, mm. uh, that's the way. And the, the reduce the, the spacing between the aircraft. So it, then that's that's this uh, have uh, that's come from the um, because of that one. Just so there's there's a lot of the potential risk of the collision, and it's already now it's happened, especially in this month. Two air, uh, so two uh, air were, um, uh, airlines already have the, the same incident. And uh, we uh, in uh, we are supposed to see that the risk from the um, other airlines and analyze. So in this case, the the uh, the cause they come from the uh, maintenance procedure. This procedure for the maintenance when they towing the aircraft into the narrows. Um, Taxi ways and uh, very very uh, limited spacing uh, aprons. Hmm. So um, before this incident, in in some airlines, even Vietnam airlines, sometimes when the they towing 
by the tow trucks. The aircraft to the parking, and nobody aware of the the size of the aircraft hmm. to look the 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 wing wing tip of the aircraft. So especially during the night time, the 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 uh, engineer, uh, including the the, tr the the truck driver, they they cannot uh, see the hole uh, far enough for the for the wing tip of the aircraft. So now they revise the procedures, especially they uh, emphasize when the aircraft towing to the narrow uh, taxiway and uh, will go to the small airplane. So the special, uh, the, the new emphasis for the procedure when they come to some specific uh, parking, uh, small parking. And otherwise this, they put uh, two, one or two more, two more the uh, personnel, they be moving and to check the both sides of the aircraft to aware that we can call the, the wing muscular and then say they are aware of the wing tip and is to, to aware that the, the wing tip is enough spacing from mm -hmm. other aircraft in the parking. Because the after, after right now, on those, uh, we are uh, uh, able to have a fly, but the number of the aircraft in the airplane at this uh, time is still a loss and on multi phone. So it is, uh, now we have the personnel like uh, wing muscular, they will aware the wing tip where especially during the night, they moving with the aircraft when they, the aircraft is towing into position to avoid the, the, uh, the aircraft collision. And uh, other way they equip uh, some more the, the code from the maintenance, the code like the, uh, the signaling lights, but the personnel can use the light and to, uh, ha to have them to have the signal for the communication. In the case of the, the wing tip of the aircraft, is uh, close to another, and uh, the wing muscular will have because the aircraft is big, they cannot the stage uh, close. So they show the signal, especially during the night, night uh, operation, to aware the truck driver to can stop immediately to to avoid the collision. That's mm -hmm. some of the procedure of the maintenance, and they they. Uh, uh, creates at this time to avoid uh, uh, this uh, situation. So from that, we uh, think um, after the mitigation and the uh, from because the, uh, from the current risk is we will it's going to be high. And after this one, we come back to the three D because we think that the. With the new uh, procedure of maintenance, and we can reduce the number of the uh, the wing collision. It's gonna be maybe it still happen. Maybe it's still unsafe if they don't follow the procedure. And uh, they th we think that they're in the level three moderates and uh, it's 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 uh, suitable for for this situation. And uh, with the number three of the likelihood. And it's possible happen. Uh, so, but it's less than uh, before. With the uh, maybe, uh, if if they uh, um, uh, have a uh, following problem of the compliance, it's, it can be happens. This one again. Mm. Uh, we we don't know exactly, but uh, according to our group, is uh, is uh, we move to the three D, and if it become to the the um, the acceptable range. The I think this the C three D is uh, medium. That's that's this is our the the okay. uh, discussion. Yeah. Okay. Um. No, this is really interesting one. Um. Couple of questions. How has pandemic changed this one, or has it not? You mean the the cost of the uh the repayment? Uh, the likelihood. Yeah. Has pandemic changed this one? 
or is this uh, you've got a, uh, a narrow space in, in Vietnam, so you've always had this risk? Is that right? In fact, is um, uh, one part that because of the Vietnam airport, we have the uh, some uh, many the the narrow uh, uh, the small airplane. But the in the after the pandemic uh, or during the pandemic, is uh, is a lot of aircraft uh, parked in in the uh, okay. the, the, uh, the area. Mm -hmm. So it's it's more aircraft, it's more more choice mm -hmm. to to have collision than mm -hmm. before. Before maybe because the aircraft own way uh, come into operation. So when the aircraft the bike to the some narrow the parking and. Um, they, they, they still have more spacing. But yeah. right at this time, it's a lot of aircraft and look like you go into the, the roof. There is more space for many aircraft parking. So mm. it's easier to have a collision. Mm. Right, understood. Thank you. Um, that's a really, it's a really interesting one. And it's, um, but the fact you've got more aircraft parked is is interesting, but that hadn't, um, wasn't immediately clear. Um, can I just clarify that uh, your group is talking about tolerable, intolerable, and it's using words, you're using words like rare, oh, which, which well, suggests you're using different matrix to, to slide pack two. Uh, Duran, let me show you a different matrix that I think yeah. they're using. Uh, just for group one is number five, more like three, Really? It's the some time. Okay, uh, excuse me. Uh, the Miss Chang have um, a mistake here. Uh, we uh, the group one choose the consequent is uh reserve and uh, likelihood is unlikely. Uh, possible. Possible. Uh, so if yes. the it's, it's, yes, uh, uh, level five, uh, impact is level five reserve consequent. Impact is level five. Yes, con and uh, likelihood is uh, possible is C. Hmm. Chứ cái, cái impact là level 5 ấy, thì nó là dưới mức độ, nó là trầm trọng mà hay cái gì? Dùng, dùng từ tiếng Anh, ừ. dùng, dùng, dùng từ tiếng Anh. In catastrophic. In, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in his presentation, the, uh, it's consequent. Consequent is uh, level 5, reserve. Severe, yeah. Severe. 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 Yeah. It, uh, so um, yeah. No, sorry. That's all right. Um, so if there is another matrix that people have been using, is there? Can we can we see that and talk about it? Actually, I do have a matrix from Vico, so I'm just going to show you on this. Mm -hmm. so we're going to put very quick on this. I'm going to share you my screen again. Uh, so this, I. This file on me. So this is from Bible. Um, so this is how it is done. So this <coughs> matrix. Slightly different wordings. Hmm. So this is is this in a oh, this is in engineering. Yeah, so more like ah, I see. Yeah. Okay. Right. Understood. Now I am beginning to understand why there were different yeah. terms being used. Uh Improbable, extremely improbable, remote. Yeah. Mm. So um, this is inter raises an interesting question of whether the whole group should be using one shared matrix. Um, uh, the advantage there is everyone uses the same terms. Um, so um, that's that's useful to know that there's this other matrix. Yeah. Um, I will um, come back to the matrix later, actually. Uh, this is useful to know. Mm. Okay. But the other question is, 
I think someone was using the word tolerable and intolerable, which suggests to me there's another document that tells yeah, you right? whether to accept a risk or not. Yeah, probably there is another one because it's more engineering. Like, mm, mm. Maybe there's one more. So I'm going to make a note because I'm going to come back to that, if I may. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. It's a useful conversation. Uh, now it's group two. No. Four. Okay. Uh, good afternoon. Yeah. Good afternoon, the teacher and everybody. I would like to uh, talk about it as a uh, society on my group behalf. Uh, maybe group four. Uh, uh, yes, group four. In 2020, when the COVID epidemic broke out, passenger transports were paralyzed. All mode allies, including Vietnam Airlines, were severely affected. And at that time, Vienna switched to a new exploration, that is transporting cargo in the cabin. Uh, initially, Vietnam Airlines carried out cargo transportation on seats, then took another step forward to transport cargo on the flight deck. Before transporting cargo in cabin, Vietnam Airlines implemented chain management uh, through hazard identification and risk assessment. And we would like to share with the teacher and you an example of identification some hazards for this case. Uh, there are many risks to be identified, such as in training, uh, fly uh, ransom, car coordinator, aircraft configuration, type cargo, uh, cargo handling, mooring, loading and unloading cargo. However, in our example, I only uh, present one aspect of trend management. Uh, mm, uh, my uh, heart uh, can support us uh, to set screen. Uh, yes, I will stop mm -hmm. sharing. Please share your screen. Uh, my, uh, my presentation is a bit uh, different, uh, different from the teacher uh, because I am uh, following the step at the uh, Vietnam Airlines SMSM. Yes, as you see, uh, our uh, Vietnam Airlines objective uh, is to tra transport cargo in cabin safety and efficient, uh, efficiently. Uh, when we uh, see it, uh, when we see the modern in uh, transporting of cargo in cabin, uh, uh, of, uh, Boeing 7A7 with all passenger sheet removed and the cargo are uh, placed on the floor. Uh, we we uh, identify the uh, special harvest. Uh, one is uh, in an appropriate handling and carry out of dental schools so that it uh, results of uncontained fry. Uh, the number two, under, uh, under clay or mid clay or hidden dancer scoop. Uh, include high and uh, energy item uh, being carried in class A cabin and contain cabin five. And uh, so number three, overheating of cabin system adjacent to cargo and consequent maybe five or even consequently unload uh, beyond control measurement, uh, that is mean assessing at the time of even that should be reviewed as part of an investigation. Uh, the first 
we have safe and emergency equipment and uh, properly equipped seam man manufacturer. Uh, and uh, we we under the we under the uh, sick sick does it mean cargo uh, uh six does uh six that is mean cargo in cabin we we uh we buy the six requirement from uh, CIAV that's it mean Vietnam and uh, Vietnam authority uh, the second uh, we have a uh, document like Com, a uh, cargo operation manual, uh, and we we have cargo it accepted for carried in passenger compartment, a uh, compartment, and uh, the number three, uh, GOM ground operation manual. We have loading aircraft and uh, uh, handling of special load. We have FOM fly operation manual, uh, manual loading and transporting cargo in passenger com compartment. We have training but uh, E3 um, to, to train for, uh, for uh, relevant staff in born sick uh, transportation. We, we have uh, SOP standard operation uh, procedure for uh, aircraft uh, uh, for fleet uh, Boeing 787. We have CCPM, uh, CCPM uh, cabin crew procedure manual. Uh, we have handling company procedure and cargo acceptance criteria and procedure. And the last, uh, we follow requirement in YATA this year as cargo acceptance to check for size of under, uh, under client uh, dancers good. Beyond control measurement, we uh, we, ident uh, we identify and analyze uh, rig, and we uh, define the rig as a uh, width probability is uh, the one, and the uh, safety is uh, a, and uh, the rating uh, is uh, one a, uh, so one a color yes yellow color, uh, the rig uh, rig. Tolerability acceptable, but safety uh, risk mitigation need to be paid attention uh, uh, appropriate level. Uh, then we then we expected this uh, is a uh, level one C. Does it mean uh, probability is one and the uh, uh, safety is C? Uh, to uh, to to uh, get uh, to get expected risk, we have uh, mitigation. Uh, the number one, we supply, uh, we supplement three Harlem five eating, uh, eating user and three five glove for eight, uh, six aircraft. Uh, the number two, deactivate electrical uh, up and mid color system. The number three, deactivate, uh, deactivate pack uh, chemical oxygen. The number four, turn the gas burn outlet to glow of oxygen. Uh, five, deactive e uh, EFE system sick or dimension of uh, emergency pathway are truly comply with the uh, uh, CAAB requirement uh, based on uh, decision of uh, 1177. Uh, with this uh, that my uh, our uh, technical department in trial to uh, to, uh, uh, to to do this start and um, until now until now we uh, uh, when uh, until now when we are uh, operation with uh, this model of this uh, new model, uh, transport cargo in cabin, uh, stay safe, safety and uh, if it, uh, it, uh, efficiently. Yeah. Thank you. It's a very comprehensive list of mitigations. Can mm -hmm. I ask, is uh, this risk rating you're using, is that the same as engineering? Yes, yes. 
we oh, make yeah we we buy uh, SMS uh, Vietnam Airlines SMS M. We have uh, five uh, five level probability and five uh, level severity. Mm -hmm. The same with uh, maintenance. I, I was just trying to imagine what one A is yellow. Yeah, and what one is green. Okay, so one is the lowest probability and A is the yeah. highest consequence? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Can, can I ask the, you've got expected risk rate in a LARP, as low as reasonably practicable. Can I ask what that is meant to mean? Ah, yes. Uh, do you want to see the previous yeah. metrics, right? Uh, I was interested in um, what a, a, the rating under a LARP, how that is derived, how that is um, worked out. Uh, sorry, can you say again? The, the columns um, just off the screen, a LARP. It says uh, uh, the expected risk rating a LARP, columns LMN. Yeah. Mm. Can, uh, can this, someone explain? Yeah. Uh, anh ơi, anh giải thích về cái việc mà... As low as the... Uh, as low as... Reasonably really, really practical, yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, I'm trying to understand, does, is that a rating after the agreed mitigations? Okay, before the, before the um, uh, agreed uh, mitigation, uh, I mean, uh, uh, it, it has uh, the, the risk of full loss. I uh, represent for the case that uh, we have the whole loss. Uh, but after the agreement mitigation, uh, uh, the C mean uh, uh, not the whole loss. Mm -hmm. So, so I, I, I'm just trying to understand the agreed mitigations come before the LARP rating. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's correct. I use uh, aircraft, uh, crust and whole loss risk. You can see it in the uh, screen. Yes, yes. So, sorry, I, I was just trying to understand the risk uh, register. Yeah. The rating, the LARP rating is the result of the agreed mitigations. Yeah, is that right? Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. 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 So we, we, we still, uh, we still uh, uh, accept the fine, however, it uh, will be reduced uh, as much as possible. Hmm. We add more uh, method to uh, extinguish the fire and uh, more method to uh, avoid it. So the whole loss uh, not uh, in our uh, thought uh, is not uh, will not uh, exist anymore. Just uh, the, the small fire and then after that uh, maybe uh, it will be yeah. So the measure is a result. So in this document, does it show us tolerable and intolerable? In your Same. in your document, in, in your um, safety manual. Chương số lại bảng là SMS. This way, đúng không? Uh, reason I ask is uh, earlier someone was saying that a risk was acceptable or tolerable. Can I ask where that comes from? This uh, this table. Oh, I see. I see. Yeah. Okay. Actually, it's, uh, if it, uh, in the, the yellow range, we do not uh, have to do anything. Mm. But uh, if we do something, uh, we might uh, get it into the green range. So it's mm. uh, safe. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. 
Okay, that's been a really useful um, discussion and I, I'm sure that other groups have learned from each other uh, to see how others are considering risk and viewing risk. Can, can I now share a screen and just talk about a LARP? Yes, I think we can share the screen. Uh, chị có thể tắt share screen được không ạ? Chị Hồng. Để thầy share that screen. Okay. Share the screen. Okay. Share the screen. Okay. Can everyone see this yes. yeah this that i'm guessing not everyone in the in the course uh, is familiar with the term alap some some people clearly are so i thought it'd be useful just to talk talk about that um this is the way it's often shown uh, diagrammatically um the alap triangle um, and it's shown as a triangle that represents the amount of risk, the width, so very little risk, negligible risk, and a very large amount of risk. And then it's split into three parts. The top part, sometimes called intolerable or unacceptable, is where the risk is Without question, we cannot accept this risk. It's, it's self-evident that it's too high. There's no debate. It cannot, cannot possibly accept that risk. The narrow part of the bottom is the words often used is broadly acceptable. It's generally accepted, acceptable level of risk. It's a very low risk, so we just accept it crossing the street, for example. Uh, there's some risk, but we accept it. This middle part is what is known as the a, a LARP region, LARP area. And that's where a risk may be tolerable. Uh, but we are expected to incorporate all reasonably practicable risk reduction measures. So it's interesting to see your, your document, which um, seems to say, well, this level is acceptable, this level is not, but doesn't ask the question, could we reduce it more? Are there reasonably practical steps we can take anyway? So that I think is perhaps the difference is this piece demands that you take all reasonable steps, even if it's quite low, even if the risk is quite low, it still says, but is there more we can do? Um, so that's how this is meant to work. It's like, it's possibly acceptable, but you've got to do all you can to reduce it further. And the reason for that is because the organization is uh, threatened, is exposed to all the risks in the organization. So you could say if there were, I don't know, a thousand risks that are okay, you know, they're acceptable. That's a thousand times, you know, it's a thousand risks you faced. But it's better to say, of those thousand risks, can we reduce some of them more? Is there something we can do to get them lower so that the overall risk to the organization is lower? So does that make sense, the idea that, yes, it might be acceptable, it might be tolerable, but it doesn't mean you shouldn't do more. So that's really how a LARP is meant to work. Have you taken all reasonable steps, all reasonably practicable efforts to reduce risk further? 
So I would question the idea of just that a risk is either tolerable or acceptable or not. Um, it doesn't really address that you could make it lower. Does, does that make sense to people? Uh, has anyone got any comments on that? Well, what I'm suggesting is that maybe the manual ought to make it clear that even if it's an acceptable risk or tolerable risk, it doesn't mean that you should just be comfortable. You just should still try and do more. So that the overall level of risk to the organization is constantly being pushed down, made better. Uh, anyone disagree? Uh, no, no, <laughs> we do agree. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's the thinking behind a LARP as low as reasonably practicable. Have you taken all reasonable and practical steps to lower risk more? Mm. The other interesting thing, and I mentioned this yesterday, is this level isn't defined. And over time, it gets lower as we become more risk adverse, as aviation becomes safer, the acceptable level of risk becomes lower. Um, there's a very good example, actually. Um, I've given you several examples of a flying into Queenstown Airport at night. Um, I guess you'll have worked out that that was quite a, a challenging project. And I'll just explain some background to that. The Silver Aviation Authority um, used to accept jets flying into Queenstown during the day, flying by eye. The pilots would fly over the mountain, down the valley, go around the basin, losing altitude, skip in between two mountains and land the aircraft entirely by hand, seat of a pants flying. And that was considered acceptable in the 1990s. Then required navigation performance, RNP, AR, authorization required, was invented by Alaskan. And Qantas applied it to Queenstown and were able to fly in using RNP technology. And New Zealand copied them and learned how to do RNP technology. The regulator, the Civil Aviation Authority, then said, now you've got RNP, you're not allowed to fly in by eye, by the seat of your pants. You must use RNP. And so in effect, what was considered acceptable in the 90s, in the 2000s was no longer acceptable. The risk was considered too high. The risk hadn't changed. It was the same risk, but it was now, now no longer acceptable. And then we researched night operations and the Civil Aviation Authority said, too risky, can't do it. We did the work, we showed it could be done, but there were changes the way we flew the aircraft. Widened the runway, put lights in, insisted on autopilot connected. And then now you have to fly daytime flights the same way as we worked out how to fly nighttime flights. The risk is the same, but it's now no longer acceptable to fly it the daytime way. You have to fly it the nighttime way. So I think that's a good example where we can now do it safer, so we must do it safer. The risk hasn't changed, but the tolerance for risk has changed. The appetite is a word that's sometimes used in English, appetite for risk has reduced.
does does that make sense to people? Any any comments on that? Quang Linh, we totally agree. Ngày xưa hạ cánh mà mắc được mà bây giờ thì dùng hệ thống tay bằng thế này. Lên mình với ai? Uh, there's another good example is a way that we fly into fly to the runway now continuous vertical guidance That's smooth and straight there. in stabilized approaches 20 years ago it was done you know differently um, it's now this is a way we fly it's a safer way so we don't do it the old way anymore hmm. so the we're getting safer and safer, better and better. And what is tolerable is changing. Does, does that make sense? Uh, batteries. Batteries carried on aircraft, pass, batteries carried by passengers. We're expecting lower risk over time. We're being stricter about batteries, what you can carry on board. Anyone got any comments on that? Other examples, maybe? Um, I have an example and also want to have the uh, opinion from you. Mm -hmm. It's uh, some things, uh, on my opinions, is about the, uh, the fl long flight of the uh, aircraft A321 medium range. And according to the last the risk assessment report, um, in the cargo flights, you just saw that is uh, now the Vietnam Airlines operated a cargo flight from uh, Saigon to uh, Japan, which is uh, flight time is about uh, five or six hours, depend on the winds. A um, uh, heavy crew is set up for the flight, including four pilots. So. They have to, they start the fight at the midnight and they come to Japan, stay for a few hours at the airport and then they come back to Saigon and uh, arrive, expect about the uh, uh, 3 p.m. So the, the, the duty time is going to be maybe 15 hours hmm. and through the night. So the last, the, uh, the configuration of the aircraft, A321, and uh, in the cabin, it, first, initially, they, they bring the heavy crews with one, the two for the duty goals and two duty uh, bikes. So it's mean that the, the remaining, this mean the two crew on duty and two crew had to be resting. Hmm. But at this moment is uh, in the in the cabin. The seat uh, almost is set up for the cargo on board. And as we know, this the oxygen supply already cut off in the cabin. So the thing is, um, the two pilots when they have resting, and although this almost sits uh, uh, and with the without the uh, the oxygen of supplies so the in the case aircraft in the uh, 35000 feet have a problem with the the pressurization system the compression it means the pilot found it easily to be dead during the resting so uh, what is your in your opinion in this case and uh, in the cockpit uh, they have a two chumps but the term six is in the cockpit of A321, there are no reclines. So it means they, they will sit like you sit on the chair and no reclines. So it's able, not able for the fire pilot to, to be rest. Hmm. So this also the, on my opinion, is also the, uh, the trip, <laughs> the potential <laughs> trip. So the, uh, what, what do you think this, uh, in this case, how we identify the risk and the mitigation? 
It's a really interesting one, isn't it? Um, mm. It certainly like, sounds like a subject for a proper detailed risk assessment. You've yeah. identified a range of hazards or risks here. Um, and I think the proper way to do it is to consider each one separately and consider what mitigations could be put in place. Yep. And then assess, is that risk acceptable? Um, I mean, it's a really interesting one, isn't it? It suggests that the resting crew can't rest properly. It's a long duty time. Depart in a not an ideal time, midnight, uh, for most crews. Um, as immediately as a range of mitigations that seem to come to mind, but also maybe a program of measuring fatigue. Um, it sounds a uh, bit like um, a duty roster that Air New Zealand put in place. I wasn't involved, but I heard about it. The commercial team identified a new route. It was put in place and the crews say, look, this is not working for us. And so the medical, the chief doctor instigated or started a fatigue measuring program to measure the fatigue levels on the crew. And that showed that there, it was not acceptable. And they stopped the flights. They said, we're not gonna fly these. Um, it's too too dangerous. Um, so maybe there's there's a program that could be put in place and see if the crews are being fatigued. Um, that just addresses one of your risks, though, isn't it? There's a risk of, um, if I heard you rightly, oxygen and supplies. Um, it it sounds like the subject of a, but it should be the subject of a, a detailed risk assessment. Uh, with perhaps a multidisciplinary team, including medical, as well as technical people and flight crew, technical crew. Have you considered that? Oh, uh, on my, I I don't know. I am not in the part uh, part of uh, the uh, related uh, group uh, to mm. to accept this one, but the as a as a pilot size, I uh, identify the risk of uh, mm. what I mentioned because it now uh, we I still see this the crew they operating the this flight and uh, some some of them have an opinion that they cannot sleep mm. because uh, if they sit in the cockpit they cannot sleep because. The seats have no reclines, mm. and they can work on the duty for 16 hours, midnight to midnight, to have the safely fly back to the Saigon. Mm. So, the second case, they come to the cabin for sleeping. The seat in the cabin, maybe even they, uh, they can have the, the recline, but the oxygen as almost deactivated. So in the, the risk of the decompression, hmm. when they sleeping, they can be easily to be dead hmm. in uh, after a few, uh, maybe one minute. Because it's 35,000, it is few seconds, 30 seconds, and you have uh, completely died. Do, so the, yes. sorry, can I ask, do you have a, um, a process for reporting safety concerns it sounds like there are some genuine concerns held by some people some pilots um, and <coughs> i'm aware that the airline has a just culture regime so you would expect there should be a means of communicating this concern to say the safety department and requesting that a a risk assessment be undertaken? Uh, I asked them, the, uh, some of the pilot, they, they, they said some of them, not, not much. Uh, some of them, they uh, said they have the reports. Hmm. Uh, because, hmm. because I haven't shown, that's right. 
but this some the 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 situation I can uh, worry about the 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 uh, the uh, like you mean the fatigue and also the 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 risk we can see in case of the uh, the compression. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. they uh, I don't know see, how about other staff they uh, what they what opinion they or what they are thinking about this one. But the uh, as the as the pilot the crew side, I identify this risk and this this one is still continuously uh, go on. So the um, that's why the, I asked you this: is is that still acceptable bands to continue like this? Mm. Certainly, the way you've explained it, it would appear not. The fact you have risks that don't haven't been mitigated. Um, for example, oxygen has, there must be means of mitigating that, uh, reclining seats that must be practicable, I would think. Um, so it sounds like there are risks where there are practicable mitigations that haven't been implemented. But I think unless you go through a proper or safety department goes through a proper risk assessment to identify all the risks and all the possible mitigations, all the practical mitigations, and then assess a risk. Until someone does that, it's just an opinion, isn't it? And um, But it certainly sounds like a subject that should be investigated. Mm. You, you should, if you, you have concerns, they should be risk assessed, they should be assessed for mitigation and then ultimately assessed to see if it was tolerable. Hmm. And it certainly sounds like it's a subject that should be considered, should be investigated. Hmm. Uh, it, it seems that a risk assessment wasn't done at the beginning when the aircraft was changed or when this route was instigated? But uh, what uh, did you mean? Is, uh... The fact that these risks appear to exist suggests that a risk assessment hasn't been done yet. It's already, uh, and you mean this is, this one already happened or not? Uh, happened, yes? Yeah. Happened, yes? So, yeah, so a change has occurred, a change in aircraft use and route or schedule route, but a risk assessment hasn't been undertaken because of a change. It hasn't, but a risk assessment hasn't been done. Is that right? Yeah, in this, in this, uh, in this part, yes. Uh, mm -hmm. I haven't, haven't got any, the, the notice or mitigate mitigation way, mm -hmm. I think. So. It, yeah, it sounds like something that should be formally reported as a concern. There should be a way of saying I have a concern or my department has a concern um, so that it can be investigated and considered formally and properly. Mm. Different airlines have different cultures, so um, if I compare, say, Virgin or Qantas or Air New Zealand, they have a different way of approaching these problems. In Air New Zealand, it's through the union. Um, in Virgin, I think because it's a smaller airline, it's just people talking to each other. It's quite informal, I notice. Qantas is very formal. Hmm. Uh, but either way, they all have a way of raising the concern. Uh, I'm thinking about a solution. Uh, the pilots may be may wearing <coughs> oxygen mask while sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> Funny. Can you hear that, Gerard? I, I didn't catch all of it. Sorry, that microphone doesn't work for me very well. <laughs> no, the, 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 the joke I said that the pilot. Uh, can wearing oxygen mask while they sleeping. 
<laughs> right. Mm. Mm. <laughs> That's a joke. <laughs> a solution. I'm not sure you could sleep on oxygen. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay. Now it's a really interesting one you've raised, and I think it's it's a it's certainly something that should be properly considered. Uh, and it sounds like it needs quite a bit of work because there are a range of hazards here that already you've you've listed, uh, and there could be more. Hmm. <laughs> Okay, um, looking at the time, it's, it's almost break time. Um, can I just quickly just share some slides of um, I may. So, okay, you can see my slides here. Um, I just had previously listed um, points to consider um, when you were doing your risk assessments. Um, sorry, as a dog barking outside the door. Um, and here's some that I listed. One is um, be clear on the objective and the metric. I, how are you going to measure impact? And I think when that extra column on objectives was added to the spreadsheet at the beginning for the first group, that was very useful because it, it really clarifies this. And it might be the objective might be safety, it might be efficiency, it might be financial. And it's useful to write them down because I think the first risk that we talked about, stability, group five, that would be useful. There were a lot of mitigations and actually each mitigation, some of them were addressing different problems. And so I think it would be useful to, to split that out, say this is addressing safety, this is addressing efficiency, this is addressing cost or... Um, Okay, the other thing I'd written was be objective. Uh, I'd be with yourselves, be very clear, try not to be emotional. Um, re as a group, review and discuss the ratings, be prepared to explore and not just go for the first one that feels right. Collaborate, use the, va use the, the value of, um, I I've forgotten the expression, the crowd, the wisdom of a crowd. Uh, you, if you've got six people, make sure six people are involved in the discussion. Challenge yourselves and challenge the group. Be prepared to say, well, this is what we think. Have we got this right? Have we considered this correctly? Have we missed something? So always question yourselves. And the last point, which I've made several times is, have we identified all the risks? Again, it's about challenging yourself, yeah, yourselves and as a group. So I thought that was, um, when you're working as a group, these sort of uh, words are useful. Um, there is a slide I sometimes use when I'm doing work is called integrity rules, which is as long being absolutely clear with ourselves, what are we being honest with ourselves essentially? are being truthful with ourselves. Um, so that's, I call it integrity. Um, and one other thing I think would be useful um, is to describe the context. For each of these risks, uh, we didn't don't have it in the risk register, but I often think at the top of a risk register, it's useful to describe the context. Um, because the context may be different in different circumstances and that in, informs the hazards, may change the hazards. So just a few things I wanted to comment on before we break. Um, and after a break, I was going to 
just show you some examples of context uh, from a project that I'm involved in right at the moment. Okay, uh, any comments before we break? No, no comments. No, no. Okay. <laughs> okay, so we have 15 minutes break, so we'll come back at 3.15. Is that okay? Yes, okay. Thank you. Yes. See you soon.